Being strong is a concept that is often thrown out as a goal that many people have from their workouts. But what does this actually mean? What does it look like to be strong, not only for your life, but for your health? How does strength actually play into both of those? That is the exact topic that Julie and I are going to be exploring on this week's episode of the Exercises Health Podcast. We're going to cue the intro song and then we're going to dive right into this conversation. Welcome to the Exercise is Health Podcast, where we're talking about exercise exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg. Hey, what's going on, exercisers? This is Charlie. Before we dive into this week's episode, I want to let you know about a new training that's happening this week titled How to Rebuild Your Aching Body in As Little as Six Weeks Without Changing Your Lifestyle. See, if you love the discussions that we have every single week on the Exercises Health Podcast, but you want more of the practical application, the details of how to take the information and apply it to your workouts, then you need to be on this training. All you have to do to get registered for free is go to Secrets dot exercise for life method dot com but space is limited so make sure to get registered asap now without further ado let's dive into this week's episode hey welcome back exercisers to the exercise is health podcast we are your hosts charlie and julie and we're coming to you from our studio muscle activation schaumburg here in schaumburg illinois where we believe that your health is your most valuable asset and the single best thing that you can do to both boost and protect this asset is exercise specifically exercise is geared towards building the health and function of your muscles. Now, so many of you exercisers have taken the time out of your day to leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, and we appreciate that so very much. So we want to take a moment right now to highlight one that we recently received. This five-star review says, great exercise information. And it says, Charlie and Julie know their stuff when it comes to appropriate exercise for the individual. This isn't what you'll find in the mainstream media coverage of health and fitness. Take a listen and and learn something new. Thank you so much for that five-star review. We absolutely love hearing about this because that is actually what we're trying to share with you, our exercisers, how to exercise for your health and fitness that you probably won't hear in the mainstream media. So if you are listening right now, we would really appreciate it if you'd scroll to the bottom of your app, find that review button and leave us a rating and review. It'll take you less than a minute of your time and you never know, you might hear your review on the podcast next week. Now today we're exploring this idea of strength because a lot of people when they come in to work with us, one of their goals, one of their desires is to feel stronger, to get stronger from their exercise. But what does this actually look like? Because there's this visual representation that we often see of as strength. But what does it actually mean when we're trying to be strong for our life and when we're trying to be strong for our health? And how should we go about exercising to achieve just that? So that's exactly what we're going to be exploring today. So here's a question for you, Julie. Okay. With the clients that you work with for personal training, how often do people come in and say, okay, yeah, like I want to be stronger when when you first start working with them? I would say all of them, actually. I think either if people are coming in for training, they know that there is well-known evidence that being strong is good for your health. But also when we see people for muscle activation techniques or meaning they feel like their function is low, then they want to be stronger, but they don't know that that's what they actually need. So I would say they all need it, but it just depends on whether they can see it or not. Well, it's interesting, right? Because a lot of times when we think about goals of exercise, the first thing that usually pops into people's mind is, well, I want to lose weight. Like that that's normally what people think. But the reality is, is when we're talking with people, most people actually want to feel stronger. Most people want to feel like they have more ownership over their body, like they can control their body and ultimately do the things that they want to do. And yeah, sometimes losing weight is part of that, but you losing weight, it's kind of like asking somebody, how are you doing today? The default answer is good. 
right? Like, like nobody actually goes into it. But when you, when they actually kind of explore what they're really wanting from their workouts, most people tie in at some level, Hey, I want to feel stronger or I want to get stronger. So I think even though it may not be as publicized as this idea of, of losing weight with your workouts, it's really one of the more common goals that we come across. And if it's not an upfront goal that somebody has, as we get working with them, it starts to come out as like, yeah, there are the things that I would like to do where I feel like I would like to be stronger. Absolutely. And I think you bring up a good point that we don't normally associate with strength, which is function. And when people are not actively working on their strength, especially as they're aging, they will start to lose function because when you're strong, you maintain function and naturally as you age, you will lose strength. So you always have to be thinking, how am I going to preserve strength so that I can keep doing the stuff I want? And one of the core principles of exercise for life and exercising for your health is using exercise so that you can live the fullest life so that you can live and do the things that you want to do. I think sometimes when we hear that word strength, we think about like mental emotional strength. And then we also think about like Olympics strength, like an athlete or, you know, someone that's like big and strong. And we don't realize that strong and strength also means someone that is has a resilient and strong body and they're able to do the stuff they want to do in their life. Let me give you an example of this. One of my clients, she's in her mid 60s. She comes twice a week and we work on strength a lot. And yes, she wants to shed a couple pounds, but the biggest focus is strength because there are things in her life that she wants to do that she's currently either questioning if she can do it. Like she said the other day, she took a vacation to Hawaii and she said, you know, I really love horseback riding, you know, with my kids and my husband. And I'm not sure if I can pull myself up onto the horse. I mean, this is for vacationers. So the people there will help me get up. But I remember I used to be able to, you know, throw my leg over top and use my arms to pull up onto the horse. And I'm not sure if I could do that now. So it's stuff like that. That is a, uh, she's questioning her strength because she's questioning her function in that. So you got to think about putting those two together because they're very tightly related. Yeah. What's really interesting about that, Julie, is as people get older, you know, fifties, sixties, seventies and beyond, so often before that, you know, I'll go back to the point I was making earlier. We're focused on weight. Hey, I need to lose weight. I want to lose weight. All that stuff, okay? But then like you're saying, there there comes this kind of turning point in people's lives where it's not that they don't care about their weight anymore, but it's just not as big of kind of a, a mental emotional issue for them of like, okay, well, you know, how am I going to look come beach season and everything like that, right? It's more about, can I do the things that I want to do? Do I feel happy? Do I feel healthy? Do I feel like, yeah, I, I can still be me doing the things I want. And one of the biggest things that limits somebody from feeling like they're them is when they're no longer able to do the things that they want to do. And and so what we see as as the years go by is the perspective that people have changes about you know what their goals are with their exercise. Sure, they may feel like okay, yeah, I I would like to lose some weight, but really what I want to be able to do is I want to keep doing the stuff that I'm doing, you know, whether that's horseback riding or just being active on vacation or being able to open a jar of pickles or a bag of potato chips and like feeling like you have the strength in your hands, being able to pick up your kids or pick up your grandkids or being able to carry bags of stuff and feel like it's just not so taxing on your body because as much as people are like, okay, well, you know, this is exactly how I want to look really what seems to be a bigger issue um, for, for many people is this is how I want to feel. And oftentimes the lack of strength hits home harder from a feeling perspective than carrying around more weight than they would like. And so the reason why I bring that up is because if you're listening to this right now and you're like, well, you know, I don't have any strength related goals or I don't feel like I need to be super strong or whatever, you know, you may be feeling that way right now because you have the necessary strength 
to do all the stuff that you want to do in life. But what we see time and again is eventually the day comes where that's no longer the case for people. And so the question is, okay, well, how do we push that day out as far as possible so you can continue to build your strength, not like, you know, an Olympic weightlifter, not like a bodybuilder, anything like that, but so you can continue to do the things you want to do and feel like yourself while you're doing them. Absolutely, Charlie. And I feel like there's kind of two, I, I guess I want to say it can be two categories or they're really actually not two categories, maybe two lenses that, you know, an exerciser might view this. Number one is that muscles are not conditioned enough to handle weight. So here's an example of that. I remember one time we were traveling and we were at this gym and you know, you don't normally like deadlift with a bar, but you know, when we're at a n- different gym, you like to test out different stuff. So I walked over and I was like, I'm going to try that weight. And I remember it was a lot of weight and I lifted it up and I was not strong enough to do it. Like my muscles were just not conditioned. were not prepared. It was probably heavier than I was. So anyways, I couldn't do it. I was not strong enough. And so I couldn't lift it. So oftentimes we think of lack of strength as something like that. Now that can relate to our regular life. Like for example, I can't pick up my grandkids or I can't, you know, carry bags of groceries. I have to get a wagon or, you know, so things like that. But that's that example. And then here's another example that I think we don't normally think of, but I want to bring it up because we should start thinking of this. Oftentimes our life beats us up, whether it's, um, you know, something planned, like, you know, I do sports way too much, or um, one thing that was really tough on my body orthopedically was a pregnancy, or maybe you twist ankles. And the other thing that kind of will wear, wear us down and beat us up is just age. Like we spend too much time not maintaining our body and that wears us down. And so oftentimes people will develop orthopedic issues that they might have a name like plantar fasciitis or tendonitis in my elbow or carpal tunnel. And so all these issues have names. And so what we can also think of is when we are losing strength in an area, we often will develop an issue that might prevent us from being able to do things that we want to do. And one really great way to prevent orthopedic issues or named issues from developing and also a way to work with these issues is to strengthen your body and to keep things really really strong so in contrast to that deadlift example I just gave you after I had my son I remember I would get on the crunch machine and do crunches and I had such lack of strength in my abs not because of a uh, lack of conditioning. Well, I guess it would be lack of conditioning, but I kind of put it in a more of a category of, okay, my abs were just under this intense stress for nine months. And now, you know, I have, I have to kind of rehab this area. And so strengthening that area very strategically is going to be a great way for me to restore strength and function there. I don't need to like go to, you know, therapy for that or like some treatment for that. So think about areas of your body as, hey, I need to keep everything strong and also uh, to keep up conditioning and also to prevent orthopedic issues from developing. Exactly. So we kind of have two paths that we're going down here. One is looking at, okay, making sure that you have the necessary strength to do all the things that you want to do in your life and have it feel, you know, comfortable to the point that it's not feeling taxing every single time that you do it. Like you can still do the things that you want to do and feel the way that you want to feel, right? So that's like the life path that we're going down. But then there's also the health path that we're we're bringing up now as well, where as your strength decreases, that's a sign that your muscles and how your nervous system is communicating with your muscles, like that whole neuromuscular system, that function is starting to go down. And when that happens, that can lead to health-related issues, whether it's a named issue or a just a symptom in an area or a symptom somewhere else throughout your body. Either way, losing strength and you know losing the function of muscles in certain areas can bring up 
different issues throughout your body. So that that's kind of the health route. So when we're thinking about, okay, well, what does it mean to be strong for my life and what does it mean to be strong for my health? Like that that's what we're talking about. Being able to do what you want to do and feel the way you want to feel while you're doing it and also not having aches, pains, symptoms, named issues that are stemming from lack of strength somewhere throughout your body. Like that's essentially what we're talking about. So then the question becomes, okay, well, how do we go about exercising to achieve that? And, and that's really the thing, right? Because when we think about strength training or, you know, okay, what, how do I need to exercise to be strong? That's when all these images can start popping into people's brains of, okay, well, do I need to do the squats with the bar across my back? Do I need to be doing the deadlifts? Do I need to look like the people that I think of who, you know, look really strong? And the answer to all of that is no. You can do those things if you want, but... No, you don't have to do those things. There's a lot of other options for you as far as how to go about building your strength. Charlie, you're right. There are a lot of ways, which could be overwhelming, (laughs) to approach this strength training thing. So let us give you just a few tips on when you're strength training, what to think about, and how frequently to start doing this. And if you want more information on this kind of stuff, Actually, all the tips that we give in like previous podcasts of different details, you can apply to this topic as well for strengthening for your health and for your life. So the first one is frequency. I think a lot of times we think about this and we're like, oh, you know, how often do I need to work out? And the biggest thing that we're talking about today again is strength. So you want to be thinking about strength training at a minimum of three times a week. You can go up to every single day, especially when you're exercising the way that Charlie and I promote, where the whole goal is to be able to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and do it over and over and over again. I know a lot of exercise systems are not all about that. They're into do so much that you have to take multiple days Mm -hmm. off. But we like to tell our clients exercise in a manner that you can repeat and specifically strength train in a manner that you can repeat. I think a lot of times we think about workouts as a clump and we're like, well, I walked one day and then I strength trained and then I walked another day. Okay, great. But you only got in one day of strength training. So really try to aim for that three times a week or more and making sure that you're doing it in a manner that you can repeat and do over and over and over again. So let us give you a couple tips on how to make sure you can repeat those workouts. Yeah. And I do want to emphasize that frequency because that, that's a really big point. You know, the, the whole idea of, okay, well, you know, I lift my weights once a week and that's enough the fact of the matter is is it's just not especially as years go by you know there are a lot of things that ultimately are are going against us as we get older that are prohibiting us from maintaining our strength let alone building our strength and so really i what we say is hey if you're over the age of 35 you need to be aiming to get in three times a week minimum for your resistance training. You know, if you're under the age of 35, you, you can get by with, you know, a couple days a week of you doing your strength training and, you know, maintain your strength and possibly even build your strength. But really kind of that, that mid thirties, um, that's when we start to see people go on this decline if they're not actively trying to pursue improving the health and function of their body. So if you're over the age of 35, really, you need to be focusing on trying to get in three times a week with your resistance training. Now, Julie brought up such a great point. This doesn't mean that when you go in and you do your resistance training that you are trying to crush it every single time because that in and of itself is going to be prohibitive to you getting in your three times a week. So it is of the utmost importance that you are exercising in a way that you can return to with the necessary frequency. And and if you think about, okay, am I exercising today in a way that I can come back and exercise again tomorrow? Like that's the question that we need to be asking ourselves, right? And so how do we go about doing this? You know, we cover this a lot in a number of other episodes, but really what I want to offer you right now is when it comes to strength training, so often people think that the result happens from the weight moving up and down in space. Meaning, okay, I did, you know, shoulder press and the dumbbells went up and down 10 times. And so ipso facto, like I got stronger or or whatever, right? The weight moving up and down in space doesn't have anything to do with you getting stronger. So what we say is you need to focus 
I'm prioritizing contraction over motion. What, what this means is focus on squeezing your muscles while you're doing the exercise. Remove the idea that you need to lift the weight a certain number of times and instead just focus on squeezing your muscles while you're doing the exercise. It doesn't mean you're not going to lift the weight. It doesn't mean it's not going to go up and down. But one of the biggest culprits that leads to people not being able to return to exercise as frequently as they need to is feeling icky, beat up, and sore from their workouts. And and so one way to go about avoiding that is instead of thinking about trying to move the weight up and down, just focus on squeezing your muscles. Charlie, that is definitely the biggest tip to help people return to workouts over and over again because why are we in the gym anyways? We're there to stimulate and challenge muscles. And when we do that, that's how we get health changes from our workouts. When we go to the gym and just focus on the weights going up and down, the only health result you get is when those muscles were really stimulated. So we might as well just cut to the chase and leave out all the extra junk and just focus on your muscle squeezing. This might look like you having to slow down. It might mean that you're doing less. It might mean you're doing less weights, but we're looking at the stimulus factor. And so when we think about how can we prioritize and highlight and really put that muscle contraction at the forefront of your workout? We really have to step back and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to drop my ego about, you know, getting X amount of reps in or keeping up with the teacher in the class or keeping up with my video and really focus in on squeezing the muscle that we're trying to activate and trying to challenge. And that'll really actually serve you in many ways. Number one, it'll help you return to exercise. Number two, it'll help you not feel sore and achy. And number three, it'll help you stay safer. Like when you go slow and you think about the muscle squeezing, you can... You can feel when your body is done, like your body will tell you and you won't miss that cue. Oftentimes when we're going too quickly or we're going and thinking about reps, like I got to get 10 in no matter what, then we ignore the cues and signals that our body's giving us. So when we're exercising to strengthen, to promote your health and and to promote you being able to live the life you want to live, you really have to focus on building muscle strength and to do that you got to focus on muscle squeezing when you're working out so when it comes to building strength it's not just for athletes it's not just for the people we see competing on tv or you know the people we see in the magazines it's for every single one of us because the reality is is as we lose our strength we lose our function throughout our life and as we lose our function not only do we lose our health but we lose the ability to do the things in life that we want to do so in order to to maintain our health in order to to try to keep symptoms at bay for as long as possible in order to be able to continue to do the things that we want to do in life while feeling the way we want to feel maintaining and increasing our strength throughout our life is a key component to that now there are different ways you can go about it but making sure that you are getting your resistance training in your strength training in a minimum of three times a week and focusing on squeezing your muscles while you do that is the top tips that we have for you in order for you to accomplish those goals. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is resistant to trying to do strength training? They just will either want to do cardio or they want to stick with their walking because they feel like strength training isn't for them. Share this episode with them so they can learn about the benefits that strength training can provide for their life and for their health. And while you're online, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It helps people find our podcasts when they're looking for information on exercise and when they're looking for information on health. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us that five-star rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk with you all next week. So what'd you think about that episode? Did you find the information useful? If you enjoyed what we discussed during today's episode of the Exercises Health Podcast, then you are going to love what I'm going to be presenting during my new training, How to Rebuild Your Aching Body in as Little as Six Weeks Without Changing Your Lifestyle. It's happening this week and you can get registered for free by going to secrets.exerciseforlifemethod.com. But space is limited, so you need to head there now. Secrets.exerciseforlifemethod.com and I can't wait to see you there.
This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Julie and Charlie Gates, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical issue, consult a licensed physician.